good morning and welcome to video 1.1 of statistics where we're going to talk very briefly about a um, little bit of data analysis kind of just some vocab words there's no real question sets just yet we'll kind of just explore a little bit of an introduction hopefully this feels like a review <clears throat> and then we'll hit some actual data analysis in video 1.2 so I've taken this PowerPoint from the statistics book that you can check out if you'd like to, uh, the practice of statistics. And so it's just a brief overview, statistics is a data science. And so what are we gonna do when we analyze data? When you analyze the data, you should be organizing, displaying, summarizing, and asking questions about the data. And that might seem, okay, simplistic or common sense, but these are key words that we use in AP statistics. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is get, get that data, organize it, find a way to display it that's actually appropriate. When we summarize, I'll give you a um, what they call in they call it in statistics they call it cussing and BSing and I'll tell you what that is in next uh, next week's video and then of course you ask questions and you have to be specific about your data analysis so two vocab words to recall what is an individual what is a variable an individual is the object described by the data set and then the variable is any characteristic of an individual so for example um, in, var in variables, we have categorical and we have quantitative. So category is, you know, obviously different types of categories that you can place an individual into, whereas quantitative is a numeric sense. Um, so, you know, like categories could be, do you have an advisory period? Yes or no. Quantitative variable could be how many students are in advisory periods per teacher, uh, just kind of a little bit of a different kind of category versus numeric. Okay, so a variable generally takes on many different values. We're interested in how often a variable can take each value. Uh, distribution tells us what values a variable takes and how often it takes those values. So we know what a variable is. We kind of recognize it. Maybe science, maybe previous classes has kind of taught us that variables uh, can be these different things that we determine. We define what a variable is. Um, distribution is... The actual number, what is the spread? We don't know that word just yet. We're learning it in just a little bit. Well, what is the spread of those numbers? Um, does it repeat? These are the words that you know you might recognize from previous ones, mean, medium, mode, spread, center, all of those fun vocab words kind of comes in this distribution. Okay, so uh, this is just a brief little example. Variables of interest would be those miles per gallon. And then the dot plot of the mile per gallon distribution is shown right here. So that's one of the types of dist uh, displayings that we can use is a dot plot distribution. Um, in order to explore the data, first and foremost, you have to understand what you're seeing. So you have to categorize it based off of what you know. So first of all, what are the variables and then what do you know about the variables and how they relate to each other and that's what they mean by find that relationship amongst your variables so it says start with a graph of graphs so we have this dot plot of this information the models and their m and their miles per gallon okay we add numerical summaries and this is kind of where we're going to start learning how to do those statistics how do we solve them we'll start with a little bit of exploration kind of understanding the basics of standard deviation in this next video um, but this is just like a super introductory piece just kind of give you an idea of what we're starting when you have a population you take a sample and that's what you now analyze. Obviously, you don't have the capabilities, most of us don't have the capabilities uh, to go study an entire population. So what you do is you take a sample set, you collect the data, you perform an analysis, and then you make an inference about the population. And that's the purpose of data analysis in statistics, is that you're trying to make an inference about an entire population of people. If we wanted to know how, um, how many kids in San Antonio have a peanut allergy, right? Let's say we just wanted to know what is the probability, how how should schools go about it? Is it, a, is it an issue uh, that's, you know, San Antonio Y? Well, we don't necessarily want to pull every high school or every middle school or every elementary school or every charter or every private. That's a lot of people to pull from. So instead, what we might do is we might pull a couple of schools from one district and a couple schools from another district and a couple, and so we pull sample populations. We analyze it and then we're gonna make an inference that you know I'm making up this number this is a this is a fake number but let's say we notice that 23 percent of students have a peanut allergy then we're maybe going to infer that in San Antonio about 20 percent of high school or middle school or elementary or whatever students possibly have exposure to a peanut allergy might not be good for them it might be detrimental and so we might pursue 
allergy trainings and blah, 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 blah. So that's the point of pulling a sample size to make an inference of a population. So you should have recognized some variables here. And so these are the important words that we kind of have to start understanding and using. What is an individual? What is a variable? Category versus quantitative, which are our numbers, right? A distribution is, you know, what is the value? How often do you take those values? How often do you take a sample set? There's different different kind of concepts in there. And inference is, is that conclusion that you understood about a sample set that you are now relating to the entire population. So moving forward to analyzing categorical data. Okay, so what is a categorical data? Again, that's those categories. So, you know, here we have uh, stations radio stations. So the categories are adult contemporary, adult standards, country, it's rock, Spanish language. Those are categories. Those aren't numbers. But we're going to collect how many people are listening to that station. I think that's what this um, is doing. Yeah. And so there's a frequency table. It's the number of people who listen inside us on so contemporary hit. 569 people, I guess, self-reported that they're listening to contemporary hit. And then we have a relative frequency table, which actually takes what is the percent out of 100. In this case, technically 99.9, .9, but that's that percent of people. So our variable is the format. What type of radio station? The values are the categories underneath and the count is obviously the number in the count of stations or the percent. So that's that how we use the data. Okay, displaying categorical data, you can use a bar graph, you can use a pie chart. You guys are used to seeing both. So here is that bar graph, here is that pie chart. Both represent the same information, um, but one is telling you the actual frequency and the other is telling you percents. So it's kind of how you want to use that information, how you want to display it. What makes a good graph and what makes a bad graph? OK, so they've talked to you about some of the important things. Um, we react to the height of the area. We react to the area, we react to the height, we react to blah, blah, blah. So one of the things they tell you is when you make a bar graph, make sure the bars are equally wide because then you're going to ask questions. Why is this one bigger than that? Why is that one smaller than this? Um, it is tempting to replace the bars with pictures for greater eye appeal. Just don't do it. And when, when it comes to data um, displaying, it is so important to be concise, simplistic. Okay, so I love to do fun things, but in the case of statistics, it's important to be more concise and more um, visually appropriate. And so that means, you know, standardized, simplistic. It looks even. It looks good, but it doesn't look chaos. Um, beware the picture graphs and watch those scales, scale, scale, scales, watch those scales. It's important when reading. It's also important when creating. So whew, I saw I fixed all this and I don't know why it came back up. I'm so sorry. Two way district, two way tables and marginal distributions. When a data set involves two category categorical variables, we begin by examining the counter percents in each. So if I have two different categories, not just the radio stations, but something else. So uh, they want to have a row and a column. So remember rows versus columns, rows versus columns. So ah, here we go. A great example. So um, are you going to get rich and by female or male? So you've got the row variable and the column variable. And in this instance, our row variable is whether or not they're going to get rich. And then our column variable is whether or not they're a female or a male. So um, and we talked about the two variables, but how many young adults were surveyed in general? How many young adults? So the total number of young adults is right here, 4,826. Uh, marginal distribution is um, one of the category of variables in a two-way table of counts of the distribution of values of that variable amongst all individuals described by the data. So if we're looking, uh, I thought they would pull that graph back up. Okay, here it is. Well, let's look at what they're saying. So this is where the percents are important, where you're understanding out of 100% or in this, and sometimes it's 99.9%, .9%, you're understanding how those different categories and groups are associated with each other. Is one larger, is one smaller, blah, blah, blah. So if we had that same graph, what is the marginal distribution of getting rich? So we take those percentages out of the number 4,826. Why? Because that is the total sample set. So it's so important when you're taking those percentages to make sure that you're doing 194 out of the total. And why is it 194? Because we're doing the marginal distribution of getting rich, not by gender, simply getting rich. So that's all males, all females in that category. That's why we choose 194. So then we could create a 
bar graph of chances of being wealthy. Um, and that's exactly what they did. And this is again by percent. And they clearly told me that it was by percent. They clearly labeled it. This is not a frequency. This is by percent. So this is out of 100%. 100. Relationship between categorical variables, we have a conditional distribution. So let's say uh, you are specifically looking at the females of getting rich. That would be a conditional distribution. And so in this one, we are looking at um, males. Sorry, they chose males. Okay, so let's say we're looking at just the males. So then in that first chance, almost no chance of getting rich, there were only 98 males in that category. So that's the value you would use. But why wouldn't I use 4,826? Because that's the total number of young adults. Again, I want to be very careful about my percentages. I want the males. That means the total number of males is actually 2,459. It is important to make sure your percentages have the right top number and the right bottom number, the right number denominator okay so then they did the females and now we create a little bit of a stacked bar graph here and so you can kind of see that we have our males in one category and our females in the other and then by percentages they they uh, did it by colors so different way that we can see that bar graph and this is again an acceptable method of displaying our data uh, so the question says, can we say that there is an association between gender and opinion in the population of young adults? Making this determination requires formal inference, which we'll have to wait for a few chapters. So why can't we make this inference? That's an important question to ask. Even a strong, uh, okay, so they answered it for me. Even a strong association between two categorical variables can be influenced by other variables lurking in the background. This is the most important part of statistics is to ask questions. In that very first or second slide, it told you that that final italicized was asking questions. Is there an association? Very possibly, there's some sort of link, but is that all? that is influencing this. Well, we didn't ask those questions. We don't know what our outside information is. We, we don't know all the details of this study just yet. So it is important not to make an inference without enough information. And so that's what they mean by that formal inference. We have enough information to discuss the, the data, to discuss and analyze the data. All right, and the final little bit of information is displaying quantitative data with graphs. So what are the kinds of graphs that we might see? We might see, let's move forward, we might see dot plots, histograms, stem and leaf, and box and whisker, but that might come a little bit later. So dot plots. Um, it's the simplest graph to show data, and you literally just show the number of dots above that, like that number line, that value down there, and that is your frequency, basically. So you draw a horizontal axis, label it, Okay, and then make sure that there's an even distribution between, you don't wanna go from zero to two to seven to 23, you wanna make sure it's even. And in this instance, it's zero to two to four to six to eight. And you can kind of tell that in between would be that three, that five, that everything. You scale it, that's exactly what I just talked about. And then you mark the dot above the location corresponding to each value set. So the number of goals, so here you can see, uh, this is the 2012 US women's soccer team. So they made, Two goals, one goal, five goal, two goals, zero goal. Okay, so let's look at the two. One, two, three, four, five. There's five dots for two. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five. Five dots for two. So again, they correspond. It's the frequency. So the number of times we hit two goals in that game, the, US, the 2012 U.S. soccer team was five times. And so you can actually read that in that dot plot. What about, uh, what is the purpose of uh, the graph. What is the purpose of showing, displaying your quantitative value? Uh, you're looking for overall patterns. You're looking for things that are weird. That's what that striking departures, um, outliers, funky, funkinesses, just kind of things like that. That's the purpose of why do we see it? Okay, we are visualizing the data so that we can see are there trends, are there patterns, are there weird things. Um, you describe using shape, center, spread. Um, again, this is something I'm going to talk to you guys called cussing and BSing. And I'll talk to you all that about that in the next video. And it really talks about how AP Stats students should be describing their data, describing univariates, describing quantitatives, etc. cetera. Um, note individuals that fall outside. So this is what we call our um, unique or uh, unusual data. And don't forget your socks. Again, all of our acronyms we'll talk about in the next video. 
Okay, when describing shapes, so this is something I know we talked a teeny bit about in our schmoof. So when you describe shapes, you're looking for symmetry and skewness. Okay, and symmetric is, you know, um, if you're looking at that middle point, how mirror is it to the left and to the right? But skewing means that we are obviously going larger or obviously going larger on one or the other side. So if I'm skewed to the right, then that means my graph is kind of a little bit bigger on the right hand side. If I'm skewed to the left, then my graph is. Um, a little bit bigger on the left hand side or at least compared to the right hand side these are all comparisons when you're describing so let's look at oop, i went too far let's look at this first one we would call this symmetric and why because if i look kind of smack dab in the middle we kind of have symmetry around that middle point it's not perfect it really isn't but that would be what we call symmetric what about our second one right here as you can see i'm, I'm a small on the left but as i go to the right i'm very large so this would be skewed to the left right uh, ooh. Am I looking at this? Okay, yeah, skewed to the left, and then my right one is skewed to the right. So it's the longer side, that like tail, that however you want to call that. I called it a tail when I was in school, so cool. Okay, moving forward. Comparing distributions. It's important to use language that's appropriate when comparing larger than smaller than etc cetera, etc cetera. so when you're doing this we discuss that shape center spread possible outliers again I'll describe it to you in the next one we're gonna call it cussing and BSing and I'll give you what that acronym stands for but in the meantime what if we wanted to compare these two so we've got the household side of South America the household size of the United Kingdom so are and are either of them symmetric that's a good place to start. Are any of them skewed right or skewed left that's a good place to start and so that's kind of how you would begin describing this. I don't want you to get, I don't want you to describe it just yet. I want you to understand what cussing and BSing means and don't near that they call it the socks, but I want you to kind of understand what language we should use first. And so before that, we have to understand the vocab. And so that's what today is about. Stem plots. We're almost done today, I promise. Stem plots. So you can also call them stem and leaf plots as a quick picture of distribution. I know we saw this in an entrance ticket, but I'm going to go over it really quick. You separate it from the stem and the leaf. And so what that means is that stem is the every digit before that final digit. In most data you guys are used to seeing, they are two digit data. So that would be that first digit, that tens place I guess you would call it uh, sorry no that's the ones place the ones place and then um, if you have three digit numbers then it would be the ones in the tens and etc 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 so separate each stem and leaf and so you're gonna write all your stems on the left hand side and each leaf will be on the right hand side and it will relate to your stem okay and so you arrange the leaves in order from increasing out and you arrange the stems from smallest to largest you must provide a key otherwise people have no idea what you're talking about but let's look at this one okay Inf information is always easier with an explanation and an example so these data represents the responses of 20 female AP statistics students to the question how many pairs of shoes do you have construct a stem plot so what are my stems if you can see these are two digit numbers so my stem here is five two two three five one two 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 okay what are my leaves zero two six six one seven okay so the ones I would hear there's a 13 so I need that three there's a 13 I need that three there's a 13 there's a 15 etc etc and then I would keep on going that we would do the 20s and all of that fun stuff but they've done it for me so I'm gonna go ahead and let the computer do it I missed the 19 I didn't even see it um, and then you want to put it in order we don't want nine three 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 five or six six four two three th we want them in order so we place them in numeric uh, increasing order and now you have your stem and leaf plot we add a key so we know that for uh, four nine four to nine that Four nine represents a female student who reported having 49 pairs of shoes. So they're showing you the stem four, the leaf nine, and that is my key. That's as easy as a stem plot can get. All right. Why do we use stem plots when data values are bunched up? We can get a better picture of splitting them up. So when you looked at all of this data of how many pairs of shoes, okay, that's kind of chaos -y looking data. But now if I look at it like this, it's a little bit easier. I'm like, okay, 13, 13, 13, 15, 19, 22, 23, 23, 24, 26, 26. 0. It's a little bit easier to read. It sorts it out for you. You can see the median and modes and uh, a little bit quicker. You can see whether it's skewed a little bit quicker. You can see it's see, see. It's all about what you can see. Visualizing data is about what you can see. So 
Uh, we can use multiple distri distributions. We can split them. As you can see, we have the females and the males. And instead, uh, what they mean by split stems, split stems, is that we had so many in the in the zeros category and so many in the ones and so that we wanted to split them up so it goes from um it goes to that rounding portions the ones through fours the fives through nines and so you can see here uh the first set is up until four the second set is from five through nine up until four five through nine etc cetera, etc cetera. and so that's what we did when we split those stems so you can get a better distribution so it doesn't just have to be zero one two three four there are other ways to do stem plots is what they're showing us always to have a key so that we actually understand what we're looking at and here's a great example since we have two different categories you sure can use the same stems and show me the leaves on either side again a great stem plot and it's totally valid but let's look at histograms you guys know what a histogram looks like you guys look at them and you see bar charts um i'm just moving quickly because you can hear the bell but here's that histogram and using histograms wisely and that's all we got. So thank you guys so much.